Hey there, and welcome back to NBA 2K18 Smile League Mode. My name is Pete, and today we complete the jump into the year 2020, starting off with back-to-back -back games on Christmas against Portland and Orlando. However, before we jump into those games, there are two or three things that we need to take care of. First of all, back in episode 31 we did a small rebrand, and that rebrand also produced a new logo. And uh, some of you guys have said that the red Legion S banner at the bottom doesn't really fit in. And that is something that I agree with, so I made some changes, and here is now the new, slightly tweaked version of the logo. The Legion S wording at the bottom is gone, but the color red is still in there, and I have to admit it looks a bit cleaner that way, and of course I have also applied it to the Legion S arena. With that out of the way, onto the next thing. In the comment of the last episode, there was an excellent idea, suggesting that I could make something like a small press conference at the beginning of an episode, answering a few of your questions. And uh, let's try that for this episode. Of course, as always, let me know what you think. And uh, yeah, here's the first question, asking if Mobamba could get a minutes upgrade. I think there is no denying that Mobamba has played extremely well so far this season, and the Player of the Week award he earned in the last episode is definitely a well-deserved achievement. Still, I am quite happy with the 31 minutes that Bamba plays at the moment. He is somewhat prone to getting injured, although we haven't had anything major with him yet, but I'd rather keep him productive with about 30 minutes of game night in and night out, compared to risking an injury with a higher workload. Now, we could bump him up to about 35 minutes a game, but one of the limiting factors in that regard is Deontay Davis, who isn't playing too shabby either, of course he doesn't put up the stat lines that Bamba does, but he is an important part of our second unit and rating-wise still one of the best players on the team, so in my opinion he has definitely earned to see the court for the amount of minutes that he gets at the moment. Still, increasing Bamba's minutes to about 35 per game is something that I have on my list, but at the moment I haven't really made a final decision yet regarding who's going to get a minutes decrease. The second question then is more in regards to the production of the series, asking whether I simulate or play every game. Now, I would say I play maybe 1 out of 10 games entirely, the rest are simulated in simcast and I jump in somewhere around the 4th quarter. That is done less with the intention of turning things around and more with the intention of grabbing some gameplay footage, because, and I think you have noticed that, I now try to show you a bit of a highlight reel after every game. Simulating the games entirely wouldn't produce that and leave the series pretty stats-focused. That focus is of course still there, but I think mixing in a bit of gameplay footage goes a long way in making the series a lot more enjoyable. There are games where for some reason the highlight reel doesn't trigger, so for those games I don't really have anything to show for, but those are far and few in between. And with that I think we're ready to jump back into the schedule. We have a Christmas game against the Portland Trailblazers coming up, and let's see if the Legionnaires can extend their four-game win streak. Well, unfortunately this one was a blowout from start to finish. It has to be said though that the Trailblazers didn't really shoot or rebound much better than us. They simply made fewer mistakes, finishing with 7 turnovers compared to our 18. So the Legionnaires suffer a decisive 21 point loss in Portland, still we did have a few noteworthy performances. The best scorer for the Legionnaires in this game was unsurprisingly Josh Richardson, finishing the game with 23 points on 7 of 11 shooting, including 8 makes from the free throw line. Mobamba did his fair share of scoring as well, he finished the game with 14 points, but he was most impressive around the rim where he racked up 7 rebounds and 4 blocks. Bryce Johnson finished the game with 12 points and 8 rebounds and I think that is also the last performance we need to mention here. Both Rodney Hood and Deontay Davis managed to foul out with less than 25 minutes of playing time, which probably also played its part in the loss here tonight. The second Christmas game then against the Orlando Magic, and in this one the Legionnaires were able to turn things around, the Magic a rather weak opponent and so the victory was never really in question, the end results 111 to 100. Three of our players scored above 20 points in this game, the scoring leader was Tyler Hewlis with 25, who had an absolutely stellar shooting performance with 9 of 11 from the field and 7 of 8 from the free throw line. Andre Flanders added 21 on 7 of 16 shooting, and Josh Richardson had 20, once again spending a lot of time at the free throw line. He made 11 of his 12 attempts here, while his overall shooting performance in this game was not overly impressive. Now only two games are left in 2019, and we start things off with a matchup against the Miami Heat. This one was a close affair and not the greatest shooting night for the Legion S, who shot only 36% from the field in the first half and only 23% from three for the entire game. Still, they were strong on the boards and went to the free throw line 30 times in this game, and that was enough to secure a narrow 105-100 victory. 
In total, seven of her players scored in double digits, and I'm not going to talk about all of them. Scoring-wise, Richardson and Diallo led the team, both with 16 points, while Bryce Johnson had an efficient 14 point and 11 rebound double-double. Kyle Kuzma barely missed the double-double tonight with 11 points and 9 rebounds, while Mohamed Bamba did achieve one with 10 points and 11 rebounds. So, final game of the year and the Legionnaires will stay at home for this one, where they will host the Detroit Pistons. Detroit at the moment is definitely not a strong team. With their 14-22 record, they sit in 12th place in a weak Eastern Conference, and they are also missing their centerpiece Andre Drummond due to injury. All of that combined led me to believe that we had a good chance of winning this game, and so I decided to make a small adjustment to our rotation. So for this game we are going to call up Mitch Dennis from the G League, who will then immediately step into the rotation with 16 minutes off the bench. Making room for him is small forward Kyle Kuzma, not because Kuzma is playing poorly at the moment, but simply because it was the easiest choice and one game of rest won't hurt him. Now the first half was surprisingly close and we actually went into halftime with a tight game, but then the second half was a bit more decisive, the Pistons had absolutely no rim protection without Drummond, and so the Legionnaires scored 70 points in the paint and shot 53% from the field. Mitch Dennis was unfortunately absolutely harassed by the defense for the entire game, he didn't have a single open look from three, and so finished the game with only two layups for four points. The stat line of the night undoubtedly belongs to Mobamba. Not only did he record a double-double with a team-high 26 points and 13 rebounds, but he was actually also flirting with a triple-double after recording a new franchise record 8 blocks in this game. Richardson, Flanders and Johnson the other guys in double digits, but Mobamba absolutely feasted on the Pistons' depleted center rotation. So that is the year 2019 completed, time for a quick look at how the Legionnaires are performing compared to the rest of the league. Coming off of a three-game win streak, the Legionnaires still hold the third-best record in the Eastern Conference, which is at the same time also the seventh-best record in the entire league. For the month of December, the Legionnaires also earned themselves another award, as Andre Flanders is honored as the Eastern Conference Rookie of the Month. And stats-wise, our players are also keeping up with the rest of the league. In scoring, Josh Richardson ranks 21st with 19.3 points per game, while per 36 minutes, he is actually the seventh-best scorer in the league. Point guard Tyler Eulis also remains one of the league's better passers, ranking 15th with 6.5 assists per game. Mohamed Bamba then makes a couple of appearances for the Legionnaires, ranking 4th in rebounds per game with 11.2, 4th in blocks per game with 2.2, and he is also the Legionnaires' best pickpocket, averaging just over 1 steal per game which ranks him 55th in the league. Looking at a few other stats, we have Bryce Johnson who ranks 9th in the league in field goal percentage, and Rodney Hood who cracks the top 20 in efficiency from the charity stripe, shooting over 90% from the free throw line. Now, time to begin the new year with one of the top matchups in the Eastern Conference. The third seed Louisville Legionnaires faced the second seed Philadelphia 76ers. Mitch Dennis remained in the rotation for this game, I once again decided to sit out Cal Kuzma for one more night, but don't worry, Kuzma will definitely return in the next game. For this one, at least the first half was somewhat close, then the 76ers started to absolutely dominate. They outscored us by 23 points in the third quarter, allowing the Legionnaires to only score 7 points in that period, and so the end result, a decisive 105-79 victory for Philadelphia. A blowout loss indeed, but it's not all bad. Mitch Dennis actually came to play tonight and finished with a team and career-high 19 points. He shot a pretty efficient 7 of 12 from the field, including 5 three-pointers. He also added 5 rebounds and with that has definitely earned himself to stay with the team for a while longer. The rest of the scoring and rebounding duties fell on the shoulders of a big man. Czech Diallo finished with 12 points and 8 rebounds, Deontay Davis with 11 and 7, and Mohamed Bamba once again barely missed the double-double with 9 points and 9 rebounds. After the game, now a quick look at the rotations. Mitch Dennis still in there with the 16 minutes he took from Kyle Kuzma, but as promised Kuzma himself also returns, in a starting role no less, taking over 21 minutes at the power forward from Czech Diallo. Not his ideal position, at least not in 2K, but he is still good enough at the power forward to make this rotation work. The next game then was a rematch from three nights ago against the Detroit Pistons, and this time the Pistons unfortunately came out on top. Still missing Andre Drummond, they were actually out-rebounded by us, but the Legionnaires only shot a horrible 36% from the field, and so Detroit walks away with a 7-point victory at home. Just like in the last game against the Pistons, Mobamba had a terrific stat line, finishing the game with an impressive 16-point, 16-rebound double-double. And believe it or not, Mitch Dennis actually once again among the top scorers. Just like Bamba, he also scored 16 points, including two three-pointers on an efficient 6 of 9 shooting performance. 
last game of the week and also of the episode, now coming up against the Milwaukee Bucks, and the rotations stay as they are for this one, and unfortunately we also once again come up short. Giannis Antetokounmpo was hard to stop in this one, he had a strong 35-point scoring performance and carried the Bucks to a well-deserved and decisive 105-87 victory. On our side, Mohamed Bamba was the best scorer with a measly 17. He added 10 rebounds to complete the double-double, but that wouldn't be enough tonight. Both Richardson and also once again Mitch Dennis finished close behind Bamba. Both had 15 points and Dennis was once again efficient from the field, shooting 6 of 10, including 3 three-pointers. So, three games of rest and up next we're going to face the Los Angeles Clippers, but now that the first week of January is complete, we can actually have a first look at the award races. And uh, the MVP race looks interesting to say the least. The reigning back-to-back -back MVP James Harden once again in the lead, followed by three Cavaliers players and Russell Westbrook. The Rookie of the Year race then led by Chris Delk of the Golden State Warriors, and surprisingly Andre Flanders is completely absent in the ranking here, so we're definitely seeing a strong rookie class this year, but of course the season is far from over. The race for 6th man of the year is currently led by Nerlens Noel of the Orlando Magic, and once again I could see one or two of our guys compete here. Andre Flanders with roughly 15 points per game might be a candidate, but Bryce Johnson who's currently averaging a bit over 10 points and 6.5 rebounds per game. All that while being one of the league's most efficient scorers, he could definitely also be in the conversation. Making a strong case for Defensive Player of the Year is DeAndre Jordan, followed by Rudy Gobert who won the award in the last two seasons. Now, I would love to see Mobamba join this group here, but I also have to admit that the stats, at least for Jordan and Gobert, are a tiny bit better than Bamba's at the moment. Bamba himself then meanwhile is leading the race for Most Improved Player, an award that I think he definitely deserves after improving every single one of his stats. Speaking of stats, before we make the cut I will also quickly give you an overview over our player's stats, and as always I will stay quiet for this one and see you in a moment. Alright, here we are now, despite a 3 game losing streak, still in 3rd place of the Eastern Conference, and I hope we can keep that position throughout the next few weeks. I have to say, I am extremely impressed with Mitch Dennis these past few games. Yes, we didn't win a whole lot with him in the rotation, but with 2 of the losses being absolute blowouts, you can't really put the blame on him, and his numbers over these past 4 games have definitely been more than expected. For the last week, he averaged 13.5 points, making 2.5 3 pointers per game, both while shooting well over 50%, both from the field and from deep. So that of course now adds another challenge. I think if he can keep this level of play up, he has more than earned himself a spot in the rotation, but of course the minutes have to come from somewhere. I have a few ideas in that regard, but we might experiment for a few more games. After all, our spot near the top of the Eastern Conference is pretty secure at the moment. So that would be it for today. As always, leave a thumbs up if you liked the episode, and of course if you want to support the channel and stay up to date on all the latest videos, then feel free to subscribe. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Cheers!